All right, welcome to Hiking with Anderson and Plato. We're back and we're literally on the side of a cliff right now because we thought this will give us a nice view. You can see behind me one of the flat irons. And we thought, hey, this is a this is a kind of a neat place to film Hiking with Anderson because we, we want to let the audience know that we really are putting ourselves at risk to bring this information to you. That's right. And I mean, it just isn't philosophy these days out on a cliff anyway. So yeah, I mean, that's what... <laughs> symbolism. Yeah. Uh, and, and we're going to continue a second part of two videos. <laughs> the last one was about post-humanism. And now we're going to have uh, Michael Plato describe transhumanism. What is it? Uh, what does it say about the world and about humans? Right. So the last one, if we, anybody remembers or you, uh, you haven't had a chance, you can watch the earlier video. Uh, Posthumanism is very much um, the product of a lot of uh, recent philosophical trends um, coming out of uh, mostly Europe. And the sort of the idea behind posthumanism was um, sort of the dissolution of, of human supremacy. What makes us so special? We're, we're more like part of everything else, uh, the environment, technology, um, animals and the like. Uh, there's nothing special or unique about human beings. Transhumanism, which often sometimes gets used synonymously, is something quite different. Um, uh, Francesca Ferrando, for example, who is a, a very recent, uh, or sort of very um, current uh, writer on posthumanism, she herself is posthumanism. It's very much like transhumanism is a completely separate thing. We need to uh, be aware of that. And uh, what makes it different is, is as uh, Ferrando would put it, um, it's really a continuation of the Enlightenment project. Uh, in other words, it's taking the humanism that began in Europe in the uh, 16th and 17th centuries. People uh, like we mentioned, Erasmus and Descartes and the like, and accelerating it. Um, Whereas the post-humanism was, an, was an anti-humanism. It's anti, it, it began with anti-humanism and it's like, we need to come up with a new understanding um, of human humanity afterwards. Yeah. Uh, what you get here is, again, Ferranda would have called it, uh, she calls it uh, transhumanism is humanism by other means. Mm -hmm. And what you find is it's really, um, um, like uh, posthumanism, it, it embraces technology and science, but even more so because the idea behind transhumanism is that we will be able to, in some ways, um, overcome. We will either evolve or we will improve all of our qualities. We can either, I mean, this is where you hear a lot of stuff about uh, life extension mm -hmm. or intelligence enhancement um, or, um, you know, the idea of. Um, some some way of uploading your mind yeah. for future use. Having a, a Michael Plato bot. That's right, yes. That, that, that we can ask questions and responds the same way you would. Yeah, or especially um, AI is a big component of it as well. The, the idea that we might actually find an intelligence that supersedes and is even greater mm -hmm. uh, that hu in humanity and will even go beyond us. What uh, Ray Kurzweil calls the singularity. You may, you may have heard the term the singularity. Yeah, um, tell, well tell us about that. Yeah, well basically the singularity just in a nutshell is the idea that at some point computers and um, AI technology will get so advanced uh, that humanity is left behind in the dust. Uh, that uh, uh, computers will evolve and then they will start evolving their own computers and, and because they'll be so much smarter than us. Right. And yeah. humanity will just sort of become this kind of like... Skynet. Sky, Skynet, yeah. So the, the idea... Science, is, science fiction is often a good way to explain yeah, a right. lot of transhumanist ideas. But I, I think the singularity too, isn't it, that you're, you're working towards AI, but it's not a clear building block. Suddenly it emerges, right? Yes. Yeah. The, the, I mean, yeah, there... There might be a, a moment when suddenly yeah. you'll you'll get this, but yeah. but it'll be eventually. I mean, this is where we can talk maybe later about the critique of AI. Yeah. Um, what also is important about uh, transhumanism uh, is that it also has some very strong religious dimensions to it as well. Some some people have called it uh, the religion of Silicon Valley. Hmm. Uh, you have people um, like Elon Musk uh, is a very big proponent of it. Um, there is a man by the name of uh, Zoltan Istvan, who is head of the Transhumanist Party. He actually was trying to get elected on the platform um, that we need to be able to develop technology that we can download our, our brains into cyborg bodies in yeah. the future. That so, was material, kind of so that's the, some of the materialism, right? That's, the, yeah. the, your, your consciousness is purely your brain. And so there's no reason why the only thing keeping us from replicating that is limits of technology. Once we eventually go far enough, we That's can right. just duplicate your brain and have two of you. That's right. So yeah. if one dies, the other one keeps going. Right. It's all it's 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 materialist in the way uh, because of course it says that ultimately 
um, what you are is the matter and, and computational mm -hmm. signals. There's nothing like a, yeah. an actual, they wouldn't refer to so much of a soul or a spirit, right. perhaps, depending on who you are. Though there are some religious groups, uh, probably the best known group is what's called Humanity Plus, which is a more secular organization. But there are also Mormon transhumanists and mm. Christian transhumanists who somehow try to see there's a, an incorporation with it. That, you know, eventually we're, you know, we're, we're meant to become, well, certainly Mormons, you know, yeah. I mean, again, we don't want to get the, the whole topic of what a future resurrection is like, but the idea that, um, you know, that we'll become gods. Yeah, you become God too. yourself. And yes. I think, I think is the Mormons tend, to, use, tend yeah. to have a kind of materialism anyway, that consciousness is a refined kind of matter. Yes, that's right. They, they're, they're pure materialist yeah. Mormons. Yeah. So it fits very much with a lot of uh, their personal thinking. And so it's got a lot of these kind of religious dimensions because there's this kind of aspirational hope. And you, you sort of see the people who promote this a lot. Like I said, uh, Zoltan yeah. Isfahan, who would travel around uh, America promoting this. Um, Ian Bostrom, um, uh, who heads the Future of Humanity Project at Oxford University, is another major proponent. Mm. So there's a lot of thinkers. You tend to find a lot more scientists, engineers, yeah. uh, mathematicians, and, and computer science well, people that are, that are very much, as opposed to... Um, Post-humanism, which tends to be much more traditionally humanities. philosophical, you're yeah. going to get a lot more humanities people in it. It's kind of it's almost sciences and humanities are developing yeah. their own. Well, what is of, yeah? What interests me is the, the the problems too. So, for example, post-humanism is responding to the collapse of modern secular humanism, whereas the transhumanist movement is, is it seems like the trouble. What their problem is is death. Yes, and they want to overcome death through the use of technology. Uh, death and other limitations. Yeah. I mean, there is, I mean... So, call the limitations of natural evil. That's right, yes. They I mean, want to overcome those with, with... Physical, you know, then that's where physical augmentation mm -hmm. or intellectual yeah. or mental augmentation is a big part of it. And I think, well. yeah. I think you and I talked about this before, but there's an interesting way in which that's no stick, just in this yeah. sense that material limitations are what you're trying to overcome for a higher... Well, we'll call it a higher spiritual dimension, even though they're just materialists. Right, yeah, that's a, that's a thing. I mean, a lot of people will, I mean... We talked the last time about how there's a lot of affinity between modern post-humanists and pantheists or pantheism in the past. Uh, and a lot of people have tried to do this connection between Gnosticism and transhumanism. That we're just sort of sort of overcoming our boundaries. A lot of transhumanists actually reject the comparison to Gnosticism uh, because they would because the the the, yeah. the original Gnostics were like matter they're is dualists. evil. They're dualists. Yeah. yeah, they're dualists. Yeah. They believe that matter is evil and we need to escape it. Whereas uh, transhumanists. Uh, still want to be grounded. They yeah. want to have future Chill cyber bodies. bodies or they want to have some kind of material existence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the connection I'm seeing is just the, the desire to overcome physical limitations yes. for a higher kind of existence. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In, in that regard. But it's just one of those yeah. things to be careful about right, because right. you know if you're going to uh, uh, discuss this with the transhumanists, this right, is yeah. a point that needs, you know, a distinction to, needs to be made. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that's so that is, and that, like I said, that's sort of it. It's it's less, like I said, it's a lot less um, overtly philosophical, not not the litany of philosophical names like we did with posthumanism, yeah. but like I said, you because see, it seems to come in with assuming a lot of philosophical stuff. So it assumes material monism. It doesn't argue for that so much, or, no. or defend it, or look to someone like Spinoza. It just assumes that we're material things that can be copied materially, That's right. and then it offers technological solutions to that problem. That's right. Yeah, it, it, it looks in a very mechanistic way. Well, the brain is just, you know, electricity running through neurons. So eventually, the assumption is that we will, um, you know, be able to we can copy uh, that. Yeah, we can copy that or eventually compute. And that's where, you, like we said, the singularity will just suddenly happen. Yeah. There, there's an assumption, and this is one of the weaknesses. I mean, I would say about AI theory. I mean, there's a, a number of weaknesses about true AI. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you want to talk about that or say that yeah for we should do a whole time. video on that yeah yeah i think uh, ai needs its own thing i mean everybody sort of assumes that true ai is a a, 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 a doable reality We're there, almost there we just need yeah we just iphone need, 15 will be uh, that's right yeah that's right <laughs> iphone 15 will be that will be true ai um because all you need is just it just needs to be going fast enough and be complex enough and then yeah. bon, booms consciousness will emerge, emerge or yeah, something like that yeah yeah and so that's really what you're sort of seeing with transhumanism, what its, ba its background is. Well, we'll do a teaser then that there will be an AI hiking with Anderson and Plato. Yeah, and we'll, we'll, go, we'll go a little more in depth on AI yeah. at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. um, any, any, any other thoughts or you, you want to well, think about more questions? Yeah, are you thinking? What's interesting is some of the solutions I've read, like I read one about how essentially we, we would have our consciousness downloaded onto a USB drive and stored on a moon of Mars. 
or, or Jupiter, sorry, Jupiter, because it's yeah. you know, super cool. You don't need a lot of energy. And well, the idea- I, I, I think the idea is that also uh, Europa or whatever has the possibility of a habitable life yeah. if Jupiter suddenly turns into a star. Or something yeah, like but, that, but the idea that that would be an, a pleasant afterlife. That, uh, so that's why I said the driving force is death. You just don't want to face that physical death is the end of your existence in this view. Right. Therefore, you, you, you just want anything, even on a USB drive on a, a moon of uh, Jupiter, to avoid non-existence. Yeah, yeah. No, that, yeah, I, th I think that's whether this is something that will, con you know, continue to be popular. I, I think even this is one of those questions. Like with the AI, I don't think the technology uh, is realistic, mm -hmm. um, and so yeah. it is. It's much more of a fantastical yeah. uh, approach. But it is. But you can see the aspirations behind it. Oh, and yeah. it is. It, it is that. Um, maybe it is. I mean, you know, one can. I don't want to psychologize a whole groups or whatever, but you know, in you know, we think of Silicon Valley, you have a lot of very affluent people mm -hmm. yeah. who are in a very important place, and this is the next thing they figure they need yeah. to conquer. Well, that's what yeah, the psalmist says that about the rich that they cannot keep their souls alive. Mm -hmm. So it's been that way from the beginning. The rich can overcome a lot of suffering compared to the poor, but they at the end of the day, they just can't overcome death. They think transhumanism can do it. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it was the, the Fountain of Youth or the Philosopher's Stone. or Yeah, that's, that's actually, yeah, that's a good way. Yeah, the yeah. Fountain of Youth or the Philosopher's Stone, that is what something, transhumanism is for today. Something to overcome. One, one connection also from sci-fi is uh, Ultron, right? So yes. Ultron goes through that singularity. and in, From in the a, Marvel series. From the Marvel uh, series, yeah. Uh, Avengers in, number two, let's, yeah. Mm -hmm. in, <laughs> I'm, in, sure, in, I'm sure a lot of your viewers they, they, probably know. They know better than we it, do. They, it, they probably can quote the movie, yeah. yeah. But what's always fascinating to me is that you know, because of how quickly he processes data within a few moments, he's looked at all of world history. And he is also, he, he was programmed to end, to fight evil. Yes. And, and his analysis is, well, the source of evil is humans. Yeah. So I got to exterminate humans. Yeah. So it's that's, interesting. That, that, I mean, and the AI, that's the dark side. I guess if you could say that's the, um, I think maybe that's a fair thing. You've got the optimistic side, but mm -hmm. then you've got the apocalyptic side. Yeah. Um, but, well, and, and, I and, think that, the, and that, that is a fear that a lot of them have that somehow the technology will run yeah. amok, realize we're I these that, inferior beings and we need to be eliminated. I think so. Elon Musk said that, that he's afraid that Google's going to accidentally create uh, AI that will exterminate us. Because like, yep. it'll be that scene. Skynet. Not, yeah, yes. something. He was, sci you want to learn about posthumanism and transhumanism, watch a lot of science fiction. Yeah. You'll, you'll get a lot of the ideas. Well, I think there. probably this traces to the modern uh, beginning of it as Frankenstein. Yes. So the idea that the scientist tries to improve, stop death, improve on humans, and ends up making a monster instead. And so that's the, neg as you called it, the negative, not optimistic side. But that's yeah. in a lot that's of the literature, the, the, a lot the, of the movies, the, that's the There's track. the warning parable that yeah. Mary Shelley gives us. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That, that's just what, you know, Terminator just is a, is a copyright violation of Frankenstein, right? Humans right. accidentally <laughs> make something that ends up not overcoming, uh, not doing what they wanted to do. It turns on them. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And... Uh, you know, of course, does anybody want to stop it now? That's a, you know, if, yeah. if allegedly things like the internet or Google um, are going to take us over or something, nobody seems to be too concerned about. Yeah, not too worried about it. I'm fine with it. I don't think it will happen. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I agree. And <laughs> well, I think well, we, we could talk more about that. On, I think on so. AI. I think a lot of our our uh, those in our audience will say, "Hey, wait a minute! I thought AI is right around the corner." So I think they'll be fascinated to, for our, our take on that. But good. So thank you for helping us understand transhumanism as a uh, philosophical or scientific movement and as related back to our series on critical theory. Great, and I can get off this ledge yeah. now before I fall us. over. We'll yeah. climb, down, <laughs> uh, climb down to safety. No, no philosophers were hurt. I've, I've, I've never had to like, give a talk hanging yeah. onto the side of a, a rock face before. But. And we should, we should assure everyone that no philosophers were hurt during the filming of this video. <laughs> thanks, join, thanks for joining us. See you next time.